I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, Doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the Doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I tell you what, I am excited about this week because this is an odd week. And you know odd is good on the Dr. Bill Show. Yes, indeed. It's odd because there's so much tech news. There's more tech news than you can shake a stick at, which I don't seem to have around. I used to have a stick. I had the equalizer. Remember the equalizer on Netcast way long ago? Ha <laughs> ha. Don't have it here with me, though. Oh, well. Anyway, the point is we got a lot of stuff to talk about, so we're going to dive right into it. First of all, let me remind you that we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com if it's tech. It's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. And, of course, all the shows of the Tech Podcast Network are awesome. Let's just dive into all the goodness that is the tech news this week. First of all, we have an item on the blog. The blog, of course, by the way, is Dr. Bill. The computer promotion, drbill.cc, is the URL. URL, by the way, you'll hear me say that fairly often, URL. That's Universal Resource Locator. Yes. Otherwise known as the address you type in the address line on your web browser. I look at my web browser's address line even as I speak. So, the URL is drbill.cc, as it says on the screen. So, enjoy. Anyway, first item is an interview with Leo Laporte by Jeffrey Powers. Now, I just mentioned the Tech Podcast Network. Jeffrey Powers is one of the awesome tech podcasters on techpodcast.com. His website, as I'm showing right here on the screen, is Geekazine. The Geekazine network of podcasts. He has quite a few. Uh, I've mentioned about the OTT, the over-the-top television podcast that he has. He has the uh, Tech News. Let's see, what is it? This Day in Tech News show. Have you ever had your eye itch? You know, it's kind of weird because I guess it's really technically my eyelash that's itching, not the eye. But anyway, the point is, Jeffrey is another unusual fellow like myself. He has all of his hair down here and none up there. That's his look. I give him a thumbs up on that. I think he looks awesome with that official chrome dome type look. It makes him look very intelligent. Maybe it's because of Professor Xavier. I don't know. Anyway, so point is he interviewed Leo Laporte. He went to Petaluma, California, where the Twit, the new Twit brick house is, and he got to talk about Leo building the Twit brick house, which is difficult to say, which is why I'm saying it very, very carefully. Anyway, Leo has built a, I think he said it was like a $1.2 million studio there. And, you know, <laughs> here I am in my office. It's not $1.2 million. But I can appreciate the fact that he wanted a great place to record his netcast. Now, Leo calls them netcasts. So I'm going to go with Leo and call them netcasts. Little explanation real quick on that. Leo's position is that you don't put netcasts on an iPod if you have some other device. You may not have an iPod, so it may not be a podcast, but it does go across the network, meaning the internet, and so he goes with the more generic netcast, and I like that. I think he's right about that. So I go with netcast, and most everybody else goes with podcast, thus the tech podcast network. Yes. So see, now I've explained it to you. By the way, I'm going to show you something else that I talked about a little bit last week, and that is, yes, this is the box. I got shiny on it there. See the shiny? Let's tilt it so we don't have the shiny. <laughs> this is the box that my new quad-core processor came in that's running the PC that's recording this right now. Aha! My new production PC for the netcast 
is running on a quad core processor, which is in fact an Intel Core i5 i5 2400 LGA1155 processor. I am reading it right off the box, therefore I probably will get it right. I got a lot of things wrong last week. Man, even the stuff on the screen was wrong last week on a couple of cases. I mean, if you're going to be wrong, be wrong. You know what I mean? Anyway, so I just wanted to show you that. And then a pretty box, nice box. Oops, I hit the microphone. I'm sorry, microphone. Anyway, probably a thunk. <laughs> so if you hear a thunk, you'll know what that was. Anyway, awesome. Now, let me tell you the story about that. You know, last week I called it the Red Hot CPU Edition because the CPU really got hot. Well... Uh, there's a story behind that. You know, I had the light shining in the screen. This is all natural lighting here. Natural. No harsh lights. But it just happens to be a slightly sunnier day today than it was in the middle of the night last time I did the aircast. But anyway, again, digressing. The point is that, yes, I had some very hot lights on it. However, it turned out that the stock fan that came in this box with the CPU was not adequate at all. And so I went out and got a monster cooling fan thing and put it in there. And man, I'm telling you, it is running cool and quiet. Listen, so quiet. Isn't that amazing? That thing's got three fans in that box and it's quiet. And I'm, I wish I could point the camera over here because it's sitting literally less than two feet away up, you know, in other words, it's not under the table. It's right over here beside the monitor. And so it's quiet as a mouse. And mice aren't always quiet. So it's actually quieter than a mouse. So I have no mice. I have a kitty. <laughs> you mice, you should stay away because I have a kitty. Yes. Okay. Next item. That wasn't even an item. That was just a digression. But I wanted to catch you up from last week, so. This item is Reed Hastings, CEO of Netflix, apologizes and creates a new service. You may have heard about this. He sent out a letter to us Netflixians, of which I are one, <laughs> because I have a streaming service. And he said, Dear Bill, I messed up. I owe you an explanation. And then he proceeds to apologize for the debacle that occurred over the pricing changes of Netflix. What they decided to do, however, is break off the DVD service, the mail service, as Quickster. Odd name, but okay. And leave Netflix, which makes sense. It goes back to what I was saying about Netcast, Internet, Netflix. I mean, streaming over the Internet, movies. Netflix. Makes sense, okay? So he's keeping that for the streaming service. He's creating a whole new business called Quickster for the mailing of DVDs service. Now here's my thinking. You may totally disagree with me. That's your privilege. Perfectly all right. But I have never been a fan of the mailing of the DVD service. I've never been a member of Netflix for that. I join Netflix strictly as a streaming video receiver person. Okay, so my thinking here is, is that he has seen the future and knows that it's all IPTV streaming. Now, you know me, I'm a big advocate of IPTV, Internet Protocol Television, IPTV. That's what this program here is that you're watching right now. <laughs> so, of course I'd be a fan. I'm a producer of IPTV programs. So anyway. Point is, he has seen the future and it is IPTV, and so he's like, dude, Netflix is going to be strictly streaming, okay? That's just the way it is. And so, and on demand. See, that's the great thing about IPTV, it's on demand. You know, you're not having to rush home and, and catch whatever it is you may want to see. You can actually just watch whatever you want when you want to watch it. Like this netcast, you can watch it anytime you want to watch it, Okay. So, he's seen the future and he's decided to take the, the better known name of Netflix and 
put it with the future of IPTV and the old it's going away never mind the whole business is going to die eventually anyway quickster eh, he just spun that off okay so you know hey it's still a resource it's still making him money fine that's okay but eventually nobody will care because everybody will have streaming service my opinion you are entitled to your own opinion okay next item the DC Universe Online will be free to play in October. DC Universe Online is a massively multiplayer game. <laughs> it's hard to say. And it has been previously $15 a month, but it is now going to be free starting in October. There will be other pricing for other things within the game. However, you can at least get in and play the game for free, which is pretty good. Next item. Now, I'm going to hit these items fast because there's a lot of them. This was a busy tech news week, okay? Next item. Facebook email was sent about emails. <laughs> yeah. I am a Facebookian, as you probably are. Many people are. And so if you are a Facebookian, you probably got an email like me that said Facebook was going to send less email. <laughs> so we got emails saying we're sending less email. Okay, so here's what I said about that. <laughs> I got an email saying there would be less email. Isn't that redundant? Just saying. So now you should send an email to someone saying, hey, have you heard that Facebook will be sending less email? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, well, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Next item, 29 years ago, as of... September 19th, I had to read the article quickly, at 11.44 a.m., I mean, that's precision right there, the emoticon was born. Yes, the emoticon. We talked about emoticons briefly last week with the little smiley face thing, so this makes sense. 29 years ago on September the 19th at 11.44 a.m., a man named... A man named... <laughs> Scott Fallman posted a message to an electronic computer science department bulletin board at Carnegie Mellon University, and with that simple action, he did something wonderful. He became the individual who would later be recognized as the inventor of the... <laughs> an ASCII-based emoticon. <laughs> Didn't know I was so talented, did you? Yes. Okay, anyway... The emoticon, 29 years old. Talk about making you feel older. Yeah, I remember the emoticon. When it, I remember a time before emoticons. Sigh. Anyway. Next item, Engadget is releasing a different kind of magazine called Distro. Now, that caught my attention just on its face because being a Linuxy dude... I was excited that it was called Distro because we have lots of Linux distros. But it is kind of neat. I would encourage you to click on the link that I have on the blog to go to Engadget Distro and see the video that they make about the new magazine. <sighs> That's hard to coherently get out of my mouth. <laughs> At any rate, it's really pretty cool. It's neat. And it's very interactive, and I like it. So, I'm looking forward to it. Now, it's really designed primarily for iPad, and of course, I have a Galaxy G-Tab. But, hey, I'll go with that. And if it requires a subscription, I'll have to think about that. Too many things are requiring subscriptions these days, in my humble opinion. That's M-H-O. I-M-H-O. Okay. By the way, next item. Do you collect domains? I collect domains. Some people collect stamps, but I collect domains. I have more domains than I really care to talk about. Let's just say that it's under 100 domains. Barely. <laughs> oh, now they're not all mine. I kind of registered them for other people, but I still kind of manage them. You know what I mean? Some of them, however, are mine. For instance, this very netcast 
The blog is drbill dot cc, as I mentioned earlier. CC, of course, for computer curmudgeon, and not the islands out in the Pacific, as you've heard me say. That's one domain that has to do with this show. Then there's drbill dot tv because that's the official website of the video netcast that you're watching right now. And then there's drbill.net, which is my network of netcasts. It actually came about because .net, I was and still kind of a web host. And .net is the representation on the net for people who have infrastructure-based sites, network providers. You, did you know that these extensions actually have meaning? It's not just random that everybody should have a .net or a .com or a .whatever. DrBillBailey.com is the commercial com, commercial site. So I have that. I have DrBillBailey.info. Okay, and I have .biz, DrBillBailey.biz. I have DrBillBailey.org. Are you seeing a pattern here? Yes. So .org is for nonprofit organizations, and so that points to my Word of Faith Ministries website, which is also wofm.org for Word of Faith Ministries. Okay? So I've got that domain. <laughs> then there's drbillbailey.tv, which points to the drbill.tv site as well. And then I mentioned here, oh yeah, I almost forgot drbillbailey.us which is the United States site, and it is the same as the .NET. Isn't that redundant? <laughs> but there is a purpose in it. Don't get me wrong. It's not just that I collect domains because I'm strange. I am strange, but it's not why I collect domains. The point of having all these different domains is you register domains with your name so that people can't put up a site ostensibly about you and, you know, people hit it and go, what did he say that for? He probably didn't. See, that's the problem. You can put up a site. I could get a site called johncdvorak.org or something and then say that I'm John C. Dvorak online and nobody would know. Well, except for John C. Dvorak, and he would tell everybody, that's not me. That's why you see so many Twitter handles like the real so-and-so or the official so-and-so. Well, you know, what I did is I just went ahead and signed up as D-R-B-I-L-L -L dot, not dot, but B-A-I-L-E-Y for Twitter. So it's Dr. Bill Bailey for Twitter. So you can at Dr. Bill Bailey and that's the real me. I didn't manage to do it for LinkedIn though. Most sites I was able to get them the, at my actual name, but somebody beat me to it on LinkedIn. I was a late LinkedIn person. And so my LinkedIn name is dr B I L L B A I L E Y N E T, drbillbaby.net, for my LinkedIn profile. Yes. So there you go. Why did I get into all that? Just because I thought of it this week and went, I think I'll talk about that on the netcast. Would be the week that I've got so many things to talk about. Anyway, next item Windows 8 Secure Boot Compliance Systems Will Complicate Dual Boot with Linux. Now, this is a highly geeky news item. <laughs> Here's what this is about. Okay, you ready? Go get you something to drink. Maybe a little popcorn. I'll wait. Actually, I don't have to wait because I could just... You could pause this and go get the popcorn. So, you do that. You pause it, go get the popcorn and the drink, come back. And we'll, you just unpause it and we'll be ready to go. Okay? Okay. So here's the thing. Windows 8 will be, blah, blah, will be using a new key-based system called the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface Secure Boot. <gasps> which will be signed by a trusted certificate authority. Kind of like an HTTPS secure socket layer type thing. Okay? So in other words, you won't be able to boot a system that is a truly compliant Windows 8 system unless you have a trusted certificate authority tied into your boot system, which is the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, UEFI. Okay, 
Now, the reason for this is, the reason for this additional security is because so much malware tries to write something to the boot sector so that every time your system boots, it propagates itself, which is evil of it. So this is a way that Microsoft has come up with to prevent that from happening. Now, the problem with that is, of course, that Microsoft assumes that Linux is evil. They don't want it on their systems. And even though it's your system, physically your box, they're going to try to prevent you from putting Linux on it. Dude, Tux is not happy. So here's the thing about that. The Windows 8 system will support old BIOS systems. The old, you know, regular um, boot input output system, which is what everything boots from right now. Is a bias chip. Okay, I need prompt that. Never mind. Anyway, I don't want to get too technical. The point is, it will support that. So if you have an older style boot, you'll be able to dual boot very easily between Windows and Linux as we do now, as I do on my laptop. I've got Ubuntu 11.4 and I have Windows 7 Professional on my notebook from work. But anyway, the point is that I'm sure that those crafty Linux dudes will come up with some kind of way around this UEFI, UFI, UFI. Anyway, next item. So stay tuned for the answer to that because I think Microsoft's trying to get rid of Linux again. That's what I think, but that's just me. Next item, YouTube announces a 3D conversion and removal of 15 minute video limit. They have a 3D conversion. They'll convert your videos to 3D. Whoopee. I don't care about the 3D at all. The 15-minute video limit, though, I would have cared about had I not already been promoted to not having a limit because I post so many videos to YouTube weekly. And so they granted me that, oh, you know, the whole thing with the sword and where they anoint you and all that. But anyway... You didn't know about the ceremony. Well, uh, never mind. <laughs> so, anybody can get this now by simply giving them your phone number. Hmm. I guess you're having to prove that you're really a human. I don't know. All this privacy stuff is annoying. A lack thereof, basically. I'm for privacy, but... Never mind. Anyway, next item. CERN scientists have found a particle that travels faster than light. And that's not supposed to be possible in a vacuum. You're not supposed to be travel, able to travel faster than light. And they found a particle that they had to pull over and give a ticket and say, Dude, you're traveling faster than light. What's up with that? So, wouldn't that be cool? Little tiny, little bitty tiny particle. Little police officer. Get him, Fred. You know? Anyway. Pull him over, give him a ticket. Yes. I like that picture. Anyway, the point is, here's what the article says. Nothing goes faster than the speed of light. At least we didn't think so. However, new results at the CERN Laboratory in Switzerland seem to break this cardinal rule of physics, calling into question one of the most trusted laws discovered by, by Albert Einstein. Yes. Smart dude that guy was. Anyway, physicists have found tiny particles called neutrinos that are making a 454-mile, 730-kilometer underground trip faster than they should. More quickly, in fact, than light could do. If the results are confirmed, it could throw much of modern physics into upheaval. Upheaval. Which, that would probably be a good thing. Shake them up every once in a while. You know, get them, get them thinking different directions. Anyway, they also say that this light particle traveling faster than light may have time travel implications as well as FTL drives. How cool is that? FTL, of course, being faster than light if you're not a science fiction person as I am. So, just saying, cool stuff. I really like this sciencey stuff. You know what I'm saying? Next item. Armstrong, that is Neil Armstrong, the guy who said one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind on the moon. That Neil Armstrong finds the current U.S. space program 
embarrassing. Me too. Here's what it said. And this is what I said in the article, by the way, just quickly. He said, I said here, looks like our past heroes of space flight find our current space program as embarrassing as we do. We'll never attract the Vulcan's attention this way, guys. True. Anyway, this is what the article said. Neil Armstrong, U.S. space program, embarrassing aging moon men, denounced NASA and Obama. Reason being, the first and last men to walk upon the moon have testified at a congressional hearing that NASA is a national disgrace. The U.S. space program is embarrassing and unacceptable, said Neil Armstrong, who on July 21st, 1969, I watched it live, first set foot on the moon, on the surface of the... Uh, well, let me read the actual article. Set foot on the surface of the earthly companion that in his testimony he referred to as Luna. He calls it Luna, I call it the moon. You say tomato, I say tomato. Eh. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Fellow astronaut Eugene Cernan basically said today we are on a path of decay. Being 81 and 77 years old, respectively, and having achieved much in their careers, Armstrong and Cernan have nothing to prove nor fair yet favor to Curry, and their comments reflected that freedom. Our choices are to lead, Armstrong said, to not to, or to try to keep up or to get out of the way. A lead, however, earnestly and expensively won once lost is nearly impossible to regain. Then Cernan said, now is the time to overrule this administration's pledge to mediocrity. How do you really feel, Eugene? <laughs> anyway, I agree with him. Totally. And as a matter of fact, I had a comment on this post from our old buddy, Roche101, who said, I agree, guys. It's a crying shame. I thought we were supposed to be shrinking government. Well, we're shrinking the space program to nothing. But government, yes, we should shrink government, but we should keep space going Space exploration going because, and here's the reason a lot of people say, how can you say that? Because the research and development that went into space travel has provided us with computers and webcams and technology and the internet and all the things that we love. Not to mention space, dude, come on. I mean, the Vulcans are out there waiting. <laughs> you know, they're counting their change. Do, 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 do. Waiting for us to go to faster than light. And, you know, Zephyr Cochran hasn't even been born yet, probably. we got to get on the stick. Anyway, next and final item. By the way, by way of saying this, because the netcast has gotten so long with all these, these newsy items, we're not going to have a Geek Software of the Week this week. Ah, don't throw tomatoes at me. Hold them. They're a little rotten anyway. Ugh. Anyway, hold those tomatoes, because next week I promise to have a really awesome Geek Software of the Week, probably with a demo, so I'll try to make up for it. But this week I won't, because I just don't hardly have any time as many items as we've had, okay? So, Google AdSense will incorporate the Plus One within the year. You know the little Google AdSense ads that are between my posts here? You've probably seen them before. They're going to incorporate the plus one in them. Now, you might say, what's a plus one, Dr. Bill? Well, a plus one is the little thing in the upper right-hand corner of my blog that I want you to click on. Why haven't you people been clicking? <laughs> Actually, six of you have, so I appreciate that. But come on, I happen to know there's like 56,000 people out there watching this netcast right this moment. Well... Okay, maybe not right this moment because it's on demand. But anyway, as Todd says, it's as live as it can be. So, the point is, you should click on the little plus one, the little blue box up there with the colorful thing on the top of it that says plus one. Click that because it will make it a thumbs up kind of thing for people on the internet to know that Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is worthy to watch. Which is a good thing. The other thing is, you'll notice I didn't have a Citrix ad this week. I didn't have a uh, GoDaddy ad. I didn't have any of those kind of ads. No ads on the netcast right now, but 
I am asking you to go to the webpage, drbill.cc, and look at all these things you can click on. You can take a survey for Raw Voice. You can click on the Acronis True Image ad and get you know deals on Acronis. You can go to uh, Mac Connection and get video games. You can click on the cla Crash Plan thing and get a great Crash Plan uh, deal here for a dollar fifty a month, dude. For Crash Plan backup over the internet, there goes the silly phone ringing. Pay no attention to the phone behind the curtain. Anyway, the Nook color ad, the GoDaddy ads, the Office Max ad. Look at this. Buy one, get one, 50% off at all Office Max brand ink and toner. I mean, the Roku ad. There's all kinds of good stuff here. And then at the very, very, very bottom, a big giant Roku ad for movies on your TV, Roku and Netflix. There's just all kinds of things to click on. You should go click happy. <laughs> Particularly if you want to actually get something like the Roku, you can get the Roku, free shipping, click on that. That's awesome. I had somebody buy eight Rokus by clicking through the website. Dude, that was awesome. Yes. So do that. It will help the doctor and help Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, the netcast. Okay? Okay. So, uh, I'm about all talked out. So I'm going to head on wherever I go when I turn the camera off. I don't know. Anyway, so until next time, remember that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.